today we're going to make some woodland Christmas DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be a wood round. We're going to be using some matte Mod Podge and a chippy brush, a little sprig of greenery, and this thrifted little I don't know it's a round we're gonna call it a round I don't know if it's supposed to be a breadboard or what it is I have some scrapbook paper in this lovely plaid I'm going to go halfway down here so this is an 8 inch board I'm gonna go halfway which is at 4 inches and I am going to mark that there and then use my ruler as a guide to make a straight line across I like that little green handle on the top, and it happens to be almost the same color green as what's in the paper, which I love when stuff works out like that, don't you? All right, so we're gonna start by cutting this paper down to the right width, close enough. We're gonna trim it down. We don't wanna cut off too much too soon. Then I'm gonna flip it over and just trim it up here a little. I'm gonna use my pencil on the back side. I'm gonna trace that round and cut that part off. I'm going to get as much paper off of here as I can before I start gluing this down. I'm going to take the Mod Podge and my brush and you see my pencil line there. I'm going to go under my pencil line and glue this down. At this point, if you want to, you can go ahead and put Mod Podge all over the entire thing because I do go back over it with Mod Podge but this is just how I started it. So save yourself time any way you can. Now my measurements, I have a little extra all the way around. I'm gonna use this little tool here, and this came with some vinyl that I bought, and I'm just going to flatten this out. I like to work kind of toward the middle, going outward, so we can press out any bubbles or wrinkles that are in the paper. But this is a good quality crafting paper, so no bubbles here. Then I'm gonna go back over the whole thing with the Mod Podge. Now, if you don't have any scrapbook and paper, that is fine. You can use gift paper. If you have some gift wrap, that's really pretty. Dollar Tree has some gorgeous gift wrap paper right now. Uh, they've got some with trees and trucks and some that look very woodland. So if that's what you're into and that's what you like. Okay, so now we're going to set it aside and let it dry because it is subscriber appreciation month this November on this channel. And I want to say thank you by giving back. Here are the rules. You need to take a screenshot so you know what to do. Good luck! Once the board is dry, it's going to look like this. Now we have this extra paper on the edges that you can use a utility knife to cut off. You can use an emery board to file it off. You can use a sanding block from Dollar Tree. I think these sanding blocks are one of my favorite things in the entire world. You could probably get a pack on Amazon at a good price, but I just get them as I need them because they last a long time for me just, you know, doing the little craft work that I do. So now that part is done, we're gonna add our little greenery pick. Dollar Tree, again, has lots of greenery picks. I saw some gorgeous, um, it's almost like an evergreen pick there that I didn't get because I have plenty at home. But uh, yeah, really, really pretty stuff right now at Dollar Tree. Hopefully you can find something that suits your tastes and coordinates with your paper and your thing. Y'all know I live in a cabin by the lake and my heart is in the rustic woodland stuff. I'm gonna do a little bit of everything for y'all. You know you've seen my vintage, there's more coming, there's more, they've got some Victorian coming to you, all kinds of things. The people who started out with me, started out with me in my farmhouse and rustic journey. So uh, I know some of y'all still love your woodland stuff and I don't think I'll ever get tired of it. I think that shows in my fall decor as well. So, when you get your pick exactly where you like it, and I just moved it around quite a few places to see what would suit me best, what I really liked. I'm going to use some hot glue, and this is Gorilla Glue, so it is a really good hold. And I'm going to just use a clamp to help hold it in place, you know, cut off the excess, and then just go behind the thicker pieces of this greenery to hold it in place. Now, the secret word for a chance to win a prize this video is going to be snow, so be sure that you put the word snow in the comment section if you want to be tossed in the hat to see if you can win a prize. What are these prizes, you may ask? 
Well, it could be a glue gun and glue sticks. It could be a hand sander. It could be block sanders. It could be sanding sheets. It could be some string lights with a remote. It could be a box full of Christmas crafting supplies. You never know. Okay, so now we've got the pick trimmed off, so it's nice and neat over there. And this is how it's gonna look. Now the heaviest parts of the pick are usually a good place to put your glue. That'll help hold everything still. And you can hang it, and it is nice and secure. I love the look at this. And I was able to cover up that little spot where it was kind of chipped off, because this was a thrifted piece, so you know. Just because it has a little damage does not mean that you cannot use it. I would love a thumbs up if you like this craft. Very easy, very quick. The next project is a wood banner. I've done one of these for fall before and it was fabric and I absolutely loved it. It's a few years ago, but now I'm gonna be doing one for Christmas. So this, believe it or not, this was thrifted, but you can get these at, I think, was it like a Target? I think it was Target. The red thing was a Target. These pieces of fabric came from Goodwill. I don't know if somebody was working on a quilt or what type of project. Maybe you can buy these. What do you call them? Fat quarters or whatever, and then cut your own pieces. You can use pieces of old blankets, old rags, old dish towels, uh, any type of fabric, an old t-shirt, old shirt, um, whatever you like. When you're doing like a banner like this, don't just think that you have to put like a sticker on it or only paint it. You can definitely give it some dimension by using fabrics and then putting other things on here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So once I've got my Mod Podge down, I'm going to just carefully begin to push out. Again, you see me pushing from the center toward of outlo outwards <laughs> so that I can get um, any little bubbles or wrinkles out of here. I want it to be nice and flat so it almost appears as though it has been painted on. Then I'm going to take that Mod Podge and go right over the top. Now you don't have to worry about bubbles with putting Mod Podge on immediately after with fabric because it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay there for you. You're going to pretty much drench that piece of fabric between two layers of the Mod Podge and you are going to be fine with that. Paper is what causes the bubbles. But I think because the weave of fabric is more open than paper texture, that allows us to uh, get a little more air in there so you don't have trap bubbles and such. So one more time over here, I'm going to put the Mod Podge down, nice even layer. And I'm just trying to get this, not necessarily centered, but an even amount from where it is and where it is on the other block. So you see I pushed wrong and I made a little wrinkle and I just pulled the wrinkle right back out. When the fabric is laying there, also if you don't get it on completely straight, you can hold the corner and pull it just a tad and you can get it straightened up. So it's easy to fix when you're using fabric because it's stronger than paper. And I want to make sure I'm going around my edges, getting those nice and crisp too, even that overhang and around the edges of where it's on here. Probably should have pulled the string out first, so you know you are you might want to do that first because you don't want to glue your string down. Because we're going to be adding other stuff to it. So set it aside to dry. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, and it is completely free to subscribe. So I hope you do. Here are these dried overnight. They look very nice. I love that they're all coordinated and that they all look wintry. You could actually probably use this after Christmas and use it in the winter time if you would like. I'm gonna use my utility knife to cut the edges off. They're nice and crisp, but you can definitely use um, your scissors, like fine scissors if you wanted to. Going back over here and trimming it off on this side. Be sure that you lay that blade beside it and hold it down firmly because if you don't, you may splinter the wood and, you know, cut into your sign or your panel there and you don't want to do that. So I've got some chip wood letters here. They are blue, but it doesn't really matter. They're not coated in anything. They should take paint very well. I know that there are five letters and I have five center blocks there to use. I'm going to use my paint. This is an antique parchment and I'm going to go over the letters. 
I like this color because it's sort of an off-white, sort of a cream color, and I think it works better than a stark white with the patterns that I have there, with the coloring that I have. So I'm going to go over each one of these letters, be sure that I get on the inside and on the outside edges so that every bit of that blue is covered up. I'm going to let it dry and in between and give this two coats. I'm just using a paper bag that I have here. I'm going to cut a section out and begin gluing down the dry letters. I'm not going to put them close together. I'm going to leave some little spaces because I'm going to use that paper as sort of a backing. We're going to do a little extra something with these to give it a little extra interest. So when each one is glued down, I'm just going to kind of cut into the paper, leave a little bit of space on each side between the letters, and then just cut them out. I'll cut this section, and these paper bag pieces are so thin, they came from Dollar Tree, you just pull the letters right off of there. Doesn't have to be neat, save yourself the time. And then I'm going to take my smaller scissors from Arteza, and I am going to go all the way around here very neatly. And I'm not trying to make this look exactly like what is underneath it, but I want to give it a shadowing or a, a backing, I guess is the only real thing I know to call it. And you see, it stands out a little bit more. Now you could use an additional piece of fabric for this. You can use a different color coordinating scrapbook paper for this. You could put these on those same wood stars that we have used um, in projects. You can do that. Um, any way that you want to do this. Also, if you don't have chip woods, you can use regular stickers, or you can stencil, or you can just do this without any wording at all on it. But I did notice the other day that Dollar Tree has like wood-shaped letters, I guess, that you would use to put on your stocking or something. I don't know. Those would be really good, too, and a lot bigger. But I didn't have them at the time, so we're working with what we got. Now, I took the five pieces that are in the center. I left the two end pieces out. We're not going to be putting anything on those yet. So we have five, six, seven. We have seven panels, five will have letters, two will not. And I've already lined them up to see how I wanted the pattern to be before I put my letters on. And this is how it looks so far. And you don't have to use hot glue. You can use regular glue for that if you wanted. Now I'm going to grab that same little jute piece or get another piece of jute. I like the jute because it still looks natural. And that's kind of the idea with the woodland look. So I've stacked them all up in the order that I know they will be strong. And I'm going to add some white wood beads because I like the white wood beads. But you can use natural. Use what you have. Whatever coordinates with the fabric that you choose. And then I want the largest part, or the most of the string, to be on the back, not on the front. I want to see my pretty fabric on the front. So I'm going to slide it down. I'm not tying anything yet, you'll notice. You can use tape around the end to thread those on if you want to, or a little hot glue twisted will make that into a nice little point for you. So I'm doing a panel, and then a wood bead, and then another panel and another wood bead, and we're going to continue along until this is done. So what kind of fabric do you have that you think you might would use for this? What would you use? I know Dollar Tree's got some really pretty fabric panels there that you could use as well, but I haven't found any new Christmas at my store yet to be able to use those, but yeah. And I know that Dollar Tree has some type of these over in the party section, like a banner, blank banners. They may be fabric, though. They might not be wood, but you might want to check out that section and see if you can find something, maybe with the baby shower stuff um, or the party stuff. So once everything is strung up where I want it, and I know where the center is because I've slid them all around, I am going to make two knots, one on top of the other one, so that it doesn't slide through the bead. And I could also add a dot of hot glue in there just to make sure that it is secure. When you tie these knots, make sure that second knot 
sits right on top of that other one. It kind of, one part of the knot's gonna loop over that bottom knot and make one nice knot instead of two right beside each other. I hope that makes sense. All right, and now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and make a double knot down here and it will be nice and secure. This is how it is going to look. We have also put the panels on that we have not embellished yet. You can see that there. The two on the end are blank, but we are going to fix them up and make them pretty. There's an end piece, and here is an end piece. So now what can you put on those? Well, you can use snowflakes, or you can use anything that you see on those and like the print of your fabric so pine or Christmas tree or some snowshoes maybe a cardinal or a slid any kind of ornament that you like but I'm gonna use greenery here these are some little pieces that I have that are just little extra pieces of greenery because I save everything so hopefully y'all have something like this laying around too and I'm just going to put some on the thicker part of the stems and press it down at an angle and then at the opposite angle on the other end Just like that. Now we're going to do an ornament. This ornament's going to coordinate with our other pieces. So um, maybe this came from Dollar Tree. I'm not sure because I don't see a tag anywhere. We're going to pull the backing off and instead of working with the striped side that's that farmhouse look, we're going to work with the flat side. I'm going to take the same paper that we used on the round and I'm going to trace out that ornament and then cut it out just like we learned in kindergarten. Cut right along that line and be sure that you move your paper and you can hold your scissors still. And I kind of lined up that middle striped area with the top of the ornament and I think that gives it a nice symmetrical look. And then working again with snowflakes, I am going to check out which snowflake I think might look best. These are some of these may have come from Dollar Tree, some of them may have been thrifted, but I know for a fact that that one, the bigger one, is from Dollar Tree. I bought those this year, I do believe. And I like a layered look, but you don't have to do a layered look. I think it just gives it a more expensive look. It just gives it a little something extra, but you can do whatever you wanna do for this. And if you don't have any more paper left or you don't want to use the paper, then you can paint these any color that you like and put ornaments uh, in the middle, like a snow ornament or something in the middle. You could also use the beautiful tissue paper from Dollar Tree. They have got some stunning stuff too. All right, so I'm just lining everything back up, pressing it down, and then I'm gonna take the same tool here and I am going to make sure that I push out all the wrinkles it takes out the wrinkles, it takes out the bubbles, and it ensures that every piece of that paper has touched some glue. To go around the edge, if you want to use some scissors, you can. If you just want to leave it like it is, you can do that too. But for me, I like to use a sander. It's just, it's fun to me. I love watching that peel. It's just fun. And it gives it a nice little edge. Which you could then put antiquing wax on if you wanted to, however you want to do your edges. It's fine. And then I'm just going to glue my two snowflakes together, one over the other. And I've arranged this one so that the point covers up the hole from the ornament that is underneath it. Then I'm just going to use my spatula and my emery board to mark my place of where I'm gonna put this back because I gotta lift it up to put the glue on it. And I wanna be sure it goes right back in that same spot. This will ensure that I put it where it belongs. And there we go. Nice. Now I wanna trim this out a little bit and I have some decorative cord. This is something that my husband bought for me when uh, for my YouTube channel to use. I think it came from Amazon. I can get a link if anyone's interested, but I know you can get something similar to this at the Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. So go check it out and get some of that trim. It's really pretty. 
I'm going to add a piece right around the square part of this ornament hanger. Wrap it around. Now I did not leave this long enough. I should have wrapped it all the way, but I do cover it up. I do patch it up where you can't tell it. That way if you wanted to use, if you're not going to use the back of this, it won't matter, but if you want to make a double sided ornament, you'll need it to be nice and finished and I will show you what that looks like when it is finished. I'm going to pull that staple out of that original hanger and we're going to hang it on this side right in between here and then what you don't see is I'll grab another piece of that and put right across the back. Now I decided I wanted to make this top piece a little darker you know because it's woodland and I like the dark woods. I'm using a furniture repair marker. I'm using this because it has a chiseled edge and it goes right over the ornament cleanly and it doesn't splatter like a paint pen might do and you don't have to worry about like if you used a small paintbrush possibly getting paint in areas that's really hard to clean up. So this worked perfectly as a stain on the snowflake. But by all means if you don't like that you don't have to do it. You can paint your ornament whatever color you want to and then put them together. You can do two different colors. You can paint them white. Do this however you want. And then just to make it coordinate I'm going to go over the top here with that same thing. See the back now? You can see where I patched it. Now you can paint the back, color it, put something else on it, whatever you want to do. Now I want to add something in the center here. So I had a gold thumbtack and two different size half beads or half rounds, whatever they are. And by the way, my sister gave me these. I think she got them from Amazon. So I'm not sure where they came from, but if you're interested and you want to know, let me know. I'll try to grab you a link. And then you just press it down in the middle. And I think that gives it a nice finish. These are the three, I think, easy woodland projects. Now it did take some time because you have to let the Mod Podge dry and those fabric pieces have to dry overnight to be able to, um, you know, work with them. But just because it takes longer doesn't mean it's harder, right? You just have to invest a little more time. And if you move on to other things while you're letting paint dry or glue dry, you're not losing any time. So it's to me, it's worth it. And I think it's worth the look that you get. I believe in you and I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think all of us contain a little bit of creativity. It's just all in how you decide to nurture that and grow it. And I'm here to help you do that and I hope that you can find some joy along the way. Don't forget to comment down below the magic word which is snow for this video to win a prize and the rules and everything are going to be um, attached for you and go back to that screen remember to go back to that screen if you enjoy the video and like budget-friendly DIYs that are unique I would love it if you would subscribe and to share with somebody who you think would also enjoy this video as always it is a pleasure being here having you with me I enjoy your company and your support and encouragement and I will see you again very soon. Bye.